everybody, I'm Tom Bassel. Welcome back to my series where I go through various publishers and tell you my 10 favorite games from those publishers. Today we're taking a look at Red Raven Games. Now Red Raven Games is essentially the same as Ryan Lockett Games. He's definitely helped by his wife and there's a few other games under that he's published that other people have designed, but for the most part, he's done them all. And he does the art and he does the logistics. He's insanely talented, and that's very impressive. There's even a documentary about him online. But I tend to like his games. I have not liked all of them. In fact, his newest game, um, Now or Never, did not make my top 10. It would have probably been number 11. Um, but, you know, still, whenever he announces a new game, I'm definitely interested and ready to try it out. So here are my 10 favorite Red Raven games. Number 10 is Above and Below. A lot of people really like Above and Below and will consider this to be too low on my list. But I, you know, this one's a decent game. There's a lot of Euro game mechanisms as you're, as you're selling and buying resources. And there's a storytelling aspect to the game, but the storytelling is a bit random. You just kind of find a random thing that happens, and it's kind of cool to make these choices and do things, but this isn't fully realized in Above and Below, but does come out a bit more in the sequel, which we'll talk about a little higher on the list. Number nine is, I believe, the first game I played from Red Raven, and that's Eight Minute Empires, although specifically I'm putting Eight Minute Empires Legends, mostly because this one just adds a bit of fantasy flair to the game. 8 Minute Empires, which is about 15 minutes long, but I mean, I'm being semantical there. Very simple game that you have just a few things you're doing. You're drafting some cards, using those cards to take abilities. If you want to try this out, there's a very nice app online, and in fact, we played this one online, so you can see how that works on the Dice Tower. But it's simple, it's fast, it's fun. Definitely check out 8 Minute Empires Legends which I guess would have made sense if this was my number eight. But my number eight is Artifacts, Inc. Now, there's a lot of games out there where you roll dice, Yahtzee style, whatever, try to get combos, collect cards. This is his take on it. This is much lighter than his other games. This one has not gotten a lot of love, but I think it's really well done. It's simple, it's fast, and I like the theme about finding artifacts. So that's why it's my number eight. Number seven is ancient, The Ancient World, the second edition of it. There are two editions of it. The second one, now this is a very cool theme. Giant titans are invading, and you need to go fight these titans off, meanwhile collecting resources. This is a very tight, very tight worker placement game where you will be messing with other players, but you are trying to get enough stuff to go fight these titans to save the villages so that they love you and you become the leader, or whatever the theme is exactly. The artwork is phenomenal, the whole thing looks really good, and the first one had a few problems which were pretty much ironed out in the second version of it. Number six is Haven. Now this is a two-player game. Now, as a side note, for some reason, I still have not played Rome from Red Raven Games, R-O-A-M. I heard that that's a very good two-player game, but I have played Haven. It's a bit asymmetrical, just a bit. It's basically city versus forest, kind of a fantasy style theme of that. As you're playing cards, it gives me a little bit of feeling of maybe games like Odin's Ra not Odin's Ravens, uh, Thunder and Lightning, but a little bit more complexity to it. There's a lot going on in this one, but it doesn't feel overbearing. It's a good medium weight two player game that just feels like when you're done, you feel like you played the game of the night, but it didn't feel that, it's not that long of a game. So check it out, Haven. Number five is City of Iron. And again, I guess I'll say second edition here, although this one is not as substantial, I think, as the, uh, the Ancient World was. But City of Iron, one of the first games I played from him, this is a deck building game. And there's all, I mean, it's, it's a straight up Euro game, but it has this really cool fantasy world. This was the game that kind of brought his world that he has to life. I think it's called a Zerium or whatever the name of the world is. This one, you know, there was pigs, but you had a deck that you're building, but you get to pick how the cards go on the deck or underneath the deck as you get them. So you kind of pick the order of the cards that are coming out. Some very thoughtful, interesting choices in this game, City of Iron. Number four, another second edition. Apparently, uh, Ryan Lockett is good at the second versions of his game, and this is Empires of the Void. But I want to be really clear, this one I very much mean the second edition. I thought the first edition was good. I think the second edition is much better. So this is a big, grandiose space exploration game. Little bits of fighting. There's a really cool worker placement thing in this game where you're basically, it's just like one worker that you're placing around. But 
it's one of the neat things that he's done that almost nobody else has done. It's a cool concept is as you go around and you discover civilizations, those civilizations then give you a new ship or a special ability because you've got some technology from them. I love that concept. This is also gorgeous, has some cool, unique special effects that will change from game to game. A lot of fun. Empires of the Void 2. Number three is my definition of, I think, the underrated game from Ryan Lockett. I don't think this one gets enough love, and that's Islebound. Islebound is essentially you're, there's a bunch of isles, and you're trying to take over these different isles and control them. But you can do so with diplomacy, or you can take them over by force. You're, you're, you're taking your ship around, and you're building a crew. This is something that Ryan Lockett likes to have, a crew. You have that crew in this, and near and, near and far, and above and below. And... That crew idea is, is a neat one, and just as you're using card play and getting artifacts, this one feels very strategic. So it's not as strong thematic-wise as the other games in this list are, but it's a really solid game, Islebound. Oh, so number one and number two, I really debated for a long time which one was going where. Back and forth, back and forth. But finally, for number two, I'm going to put Sleeping Gods. Now, they just announced a sequel for this, which is exciting, but don't worry about that because you can play the base game for a really long time. Uh, Sleeping Gods is a huge sandbox exploration game that is all about the story. You are going to go out. You are going to find different events. You're going to go and you have, you're a ship that's been transported from our world to his fantasy world. And you're, you're, you're traveling the ship around and you can go in all different directions. A game is 17 hours or so long. But don't let that scare you away because you can pause and come back and play it. But when you're done, you've just seen a fraction of the world that's out there. There is so much in this world. It's interesting, but it's not just storytelling. There's actually a lot of gameplay. Combat's very involved in behind the scenes. It is a lot of fun. Sleeping Gods. And my number one, well, since it's not number two, I already said this was coming up, is Near and Far. Near and Far, which is the best of the trilogy. We have Above and Below, Near and Far, and Now or Never. Near and Far does the perfect mix. It has some cool stories in it. Nice back and forth storylines that come back and forth throughout the game. I love that. It took the storyline from Above and Below and made it better. But also is a really solid game. And I like the game in it better than, say, the game in Now or Never. Near and Far, you are essentially pumping yourself up, getting yourself ready. Then you go out on a journey, planting tents, camps, grounds around, having a little bit of story adventure, running out of energy, going back home, pumping up again to go out. It's fun. It's interesting. It's worker placement. It has an expansion, which I don't think is necessary. The base game is fine. Expansion's okay. Okay, but the base game is great, and I really love it. I think it's just a fantastically fun game. So those are my top 10 games from Red Raven. Now, there are games that I did not mention that I'm sure that you might mention and put on the list. Let me know what your favorite is in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and these are my 10 favorite games from Red Raven. Yeah.